Morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, we might have a few more people uh, coming into the into the space, but since it's a few minutes after 10, uh, why don't we get started? Uh, my name is Martha Fanjoy, and I'm the Director of Programs here at Cody Institute. Uh, really happy uh, that you're interested in um, joining us this morning for a little bit to learn more about the Diploma and Development Leadership. Uh, most of us at Cody here are joining you from the Cody Institute in Antigonish, the traditional and unceded territories of the Mi'kmaq people, and we're um, really looking forward to giving you a bit of information about the um, about the revised and uh, revamped structure for the diploma, and uh, providing the opportunity to, for you to hear from some diploma grads uh, around how participation in the Cody Diploma has impacted their work, and then also opening it up to take um, some of your questions uh, that you may have about the diploma coming up in 2023. Uh, so, the diploma, you know, one of the reasons we're really excited to, to have this conversation today and to share out is we've been on a pause since 2018. Um, that was the last time we were able to offer the diploma. Um, we all know a lot has changed uh, since 2018 in the world. Uh, we unfortunately had to put things on hold in 2020 uh, with the COVID pandemic. And um, that gave us time to reflect and, and do some thinking. Um, around uh, the structure of the diploma, the modality of delivery, some of the content. Um, and you know, the, the Diploma and Development Leadership at Cody, it has a like a 60 year history um, and, and has gone through lots of different phases and, and iterations, uh, but we really feel the core uh, of, of what the diploma offers. Um, and, uh, and, and, and the, the spirit of what it brings together at its core has really stayed quite consistent throughout those 60 years, um, even though some of the elements that move around it might shift. So before diving into what the diploma in 2023 is going to look like uh, in detail, I wanted to take a few minutes just to share some of the feedback we received from graduates, um, from participants uh, and um, of past diplomas that influence some of the thinking that we've pulled into uh, the diploma that is, is going to be offered in 2023. Uh, the, the, the chance to kind of revise and rethink the format of the diploma gave us the chance to uh, survey. We sent a survey out to over 200 past grads from the diploma, participants in online courses, um, participants in in-person certificates uh, that we've held here at Cody. And, um, you know, we got a, a pretty decent response rate back. And a lot of what we heard from past grads from either diploma or other courses have influenced the structure that I'm gonna show to you in a few minutes. Um, so a few highlights from that survey. One of the things we heard loud and clear were that um, the thematic areas that have been woven into uh, Cody courses and the diploma for the last several years are still um, still relevant uh, and still in high demand for course learning. So we heard a lot about, you know, the top four that came up in terms of what people are interested in learning about inclusive economies, uh, climate uh, and community led climate action, uh, leadership and the importance of leadership really being woven through everything. And then participation, accountability and governance. Um, it came through loud and clear in our conversations we've had with grads over the last few years and through the survey. Uh, we also heard about the importance of ensuring that there's an intersectional and, and gendered analysis sort of woven throughout uh, the work and not siloed off. And then increasing conversations around what it looks like to, to continue the, the hard and really important work around decolonization and localization when it comes to the curriculum and, um, and, and the approach to community development. Uh, interestingly, uh, and along the lines of what we've all been learning over the past uh, couple years, um, a really strong interest has come out in leveraging technology for development um, and for community-based development and also for online learning um, and, and building up capacity uh, around online learning and looking at the potential uh, for online learning when it comes to increased accessibility uh, and reach. Um, the flip side of the interest in online learning that we heard loud and clear is that the residential experience here at Cody is key. 
uh, and really important for the diploma. Um, the peer learning that happens, the cross-cultural exchange, um, the, the space to be able to reflect um, and think through um, think through what you're learning and, and, and what everyone is learning together and how that is going to um, translate back into practice uh, is really important. Um, and we also heard sometimes so that uh, the, in, in previous iterations of the diploma, the extended time period, the 20 weeks away from family, from career, uh, from community, from practice is hard. Uh, and, and sometimes difficult for people to balance and manage. Um, you know, we've seen the increasing trend with some of our on-campus programs where we all know uh, the, 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 the benefits and, and, and sometimes the, the wonder of being able to, um, to work on the fly and work remotely um, and have that increased accessibility, but sometimes it also leads to increased pressure. We're having that space to reflect and do that thinking and do that co-learning and that peer learning can be difficult if you're also at the same time, maybe in the mornings and evenings and weekends trying to meet the demands uh, of your work or your organization um, back home. So finding that balance. Um, the other big piece we heard is that um, options are important. Uh, while there are core threads that run through um, around asset-based uh, community development, around uh, participatory adult education, um, around you know, collective action for social change, um, pieces building on the roots of the Antigonish movement uh, and of Cody practice, um, that, that it's important to have uh, uh, access to electives and to some customization uh, of what people are learning that, that, that bring those common threads and that core together. Um, and in particular, when I get into the structure, that there's there's interest and flexibility around what does um, what does it look like in the final module of the diploma to take your practice back to community, um, and 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 what is the flexibility around um, what that module looks like for for different people depending on the context. So we've been taking all of that um, to heart and to mind uh, over the past while, and and having a lot of conversations around what um, a diploma in 2023 looks like. Uh, so I'm just going to share my screen um, because it's quite text heavy so that people can see what I'm talking about. Um, with the new structure for the diploma. So the diploma in 2023 is going to consist of three modules. Um, this will look familiar to anyone who's been looking at it on the website before applying. Um, it's, it's what's on the website. Um, so I won't go into detail reading word for word what's up here. Um, but module one is a, a four week online course uh, that's going to start in mid March. And this is an opportunity for participants to start engaging online, to start building real peer relationships to get to know each other and to start thinking about leadership, um, to start thinking about their change initiative um, with their colleagues and, and bouncing around ideas and, and to start preparing uh, for the, the more intensive residential phase that's going to happen uh, in May. Um, and all of these modules are uh, mandatory. So if you're coming to the residential phase, uh, in May, you would also need to be present in the online course that would start in March 15th. Um, and then in May, we move into the residential phase. This is a 10 week in person residency at the Cody Institute here in Antigonish. Um, it'll be broken into three uh, distinct parts. There's a foundational course where we're going to cover um, leadership and social justice, feminist practice, asset based development, facilitating social change. Uh, using an adult education lens, those those core pieces that I referred to when talking about kind of how the diploma has shifted, but but also certain things remain um, remain at its core, um, and that'll be followed by two weeks of electives uh, that'll be centered on topics that have come up, um, and you can see below uh, that includes some of the topics that ha we've been hearing over and over again are are quite relevant uh, to our partners and to community members, advocacy community-led action uh, in a changing climate and livelihoods and markets. And then following the, um, the, the two-week certificates 
uh, or electives will come back together as a cohort uh, for an integration of learning and, and diving deep into the um, planning for the implementation phase in module three. Uh, then everyone will have a little break, uh, return uh, to community um, and to home. And uh, then we'll dive back into our post-residential phase where participants are going to be supported um, by CODI facilitators and one another in a peer learning environment to work through their change initiatives, uh, pursue their learning goals, um, and, and really continue to reflect on, on that, that kind of iterative or that interplay uh, between practice and learning out in community. So take what's kind of come from that intensive 10 week residential phase, take it back to community, but with the support of CODI facilitators and with the support of your peers and your cohort uh, to continue that reflective practice um, as, you, as you work through implementing, um, implementing your, your action plan or your change initiative. Hi, so, Martha. Yeah. Hi, Martha. Just a quick question here. Yeah. You know, is it online? Is this online class in module one on each day of the week? Do you have any insight on that? Uh, no. So the on the great question. The online class um, will likely be um, the online portion of it. Will likely be similar for anyone who's done our online certificates. Will likely be about uh, two hours a week of synchronous learning. So uh, likely a two-hour session on Zoom. Um, and then there will be some individual work uh, broken into it and, and possibly some group work, some breakout work. Um, so you could likely expect with the online course um, roughly anywhere from four to eight hours of, of effort uh, during the week for it, but two hours of that would be the synchronous Zoom session and the remainder would be independent work, reading, uh, preparing, engaging in discussion boards and discussion online. Any other questions, Brian, about the the um, structure? Yeah, this is one quick one there from uh, Radhika. Uh, what is the duration of the training and how will the assessment take place? The duration of the, the diploma um, in Program? total? Yes, and yeah. how will the assessment take place, I guess? Yeah. yeah, so the the duration of the diploma in total is from March 15th to end of November. Um, and uh, so that's the total timeline, but there are those kind of gaps and breaks in between. For example, there's a, a um, month long break between the first online course and the residency. Um, and there's another uh, approximately five to six week break between the uh, in-person residency, the second phase and the, the third uh, practice phase in community. Um, and uh, the practice phase in community will again likely look um, somewhat similar to the first online course, but uh, because it's spread over a longer period of time, uh, it'll be the, the, the synchronous um, element of it, the element with live Zoom sessions likely won't be every week. They'll likely be touch points, um, you, know, you know, two times a month rather than four times a month. Um, assessments um, will vary depending uh, on the module. Um, the, um, in the first module assessments will be more around engagement, participation and, and reflective practice. And, uh, similar to other CODI courses, assessment tends to vary a little bit depending on the, on the thematic, on the certificate, for example, on the elective you, you choose, um, and, uh, and depending on the facilitator and what assessment methods are built in. Uh, when it comes to the third module, the practical module, we're not looking for um, if it's it's again similar to um, similar to practical as assessments of practical modules, where the assessment is again more based on applying your learning and reflective practice, and not not you know the production of a capstone paper at the end of it, uh, unless that's a route someone does choose to go. Um, so it's the assessments will kind of shift and vary throughout depending on the on whether you're in module one, module two, or module three, and which elective you pick. Any others, Brian? Uh, I think at this point, there's lots coming in. So let's okay. go ahead and finish the presentation. We'll save the questions for after. Sure, sure, okay. 
Um, so just quickly, again, this is on the website, but um, in terms of who might be interested in the diploma, um, it's definitely practitioner focused. Uh, so looking for um, participants who have demonstrated experience um, working in um, social or economic development, um, but again, across a wide range of, of sectors or areas. Um, people who are going to be immediately returning to their community and sector following the program. So people who are embedded in community, returning to community and putting their learning to practice. Um, you know, goes without saying a great drive and passion for their work. Um, uh, and um, practitioners, again, in civil society, community-based organizations, but also in positions in public or private institutions or philanthropic agencies, um, social movements, social entrepreneurs, businesses. Um, it's really about making that connection between um, uh, your position and, and the passion and interest to drive change uh, when you return. Uh, to your community. Um, combination of post-secondary education and or lived experience. So we're not looking for particular um, set uh, education credentials. Um, it's, 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 it's more around uh, your, your experience and, and what you would like to do with your experience through the diploma. And the language of instruction is in English. Um, so, so we are looking for uh, oral and written uh, English language competencies uh, in that. And what are we, what are we looking at for learning goals from the diploma? And I think, you know, I'm, I'm not going to read through all of these in detail because I think they tie back to some of the core elements um, that uh, not just the diploma and development leadership, but Cody uh, education work has held for a long time. Um, and, and I think our next two speakers are also going to be able to speak uh, much better than I can around what comes out. Uh, what some of the outcomes of the diploma are, but you can see some highlighted words there um, that echo some of the core principles behind it around being able to practice transformative leadership, um, apply participatory adult education methodologies, um, innovative practices for asset-based development, uh, self-directed research and learning goals, and then take these and apply them directly to a change initiative while thinking through how to act collectively um, and engage in co-learning. Uh, so those are some of the, the key the key pieces um, that uh, we're hoping participants will be able to come out of the program with. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen there and uh, I'm going to turn it over to a couple um, Cody grads uh, of the diploma. So I'm really pleased to um, Welcome uh, Abby Essiet um, to share some of her experience with you. Abby is a consultant on development partner to Abuja Municipal Area Council, Nigeria, Africa Regional Director for World Smart Cities and Sustainable Organization. She's a former special advisor to the Honorable Chairman of Abuja Municipal Area Council on ICT, civil societies and donor agencies. She's a Mandela Washington Fellow and also a Fellow of Cody Institute Canada a public health consultant and a researcher. She's the president and founder of Africa Young Female Advisors Initiative, an initiative she started with other young female advisors across Africa to build the capacity of young females who are appointed in advisory roles to decision makers across all levels of government in Africa. And um, Abby, I'll turn it over to you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Namaste. Ni hao. Ekwa basi. Eka son Yoruba language. Thank you all for joining. It's a great opportunity for me to share my experience. I've been a Cody graduate for like four times, and I'm also a fellow of the Women Leadership. Um, so honored to be here. Yes, namaste, everyone. Namaste. Ni hao. Uh, I don't know how to say in Spanish, is it Buenos Aires or Buenos Aires? <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. So Diploma in Leadership, it's a, it's a full packed training program. And, you know, first let me talk about Cody International Institute. Cody is a great school that has great facilitators that have been through 
bringing about community development, bringing about a whole lot of theory of change across the globe and who are passionate about what they do. So you have facilitators who are not just teaching a particular class, but facilitators who are passionate about what they do in keeping the whole world together with the whole idea of promoting humanity in what we do. Particularly now to the leadership program, it's a, it's a program that helps you to discover yourself Personally, anytime I'm trying to really go to the next stage of my life, I think about Cody because Cody helps me to bring out the best in me. And that's what the leadership institution is going to be doing for you. It's going to help you to shape your leadership journey. It's going to help you to know yourself more and it's going to give you the capacity to really design your theory of change, your story of change. What do you want to change in your community? What thing, what action are you interested in? How do you want to change your world and also making you to be the best leader that you want to be equipping you with the best knowledge you'll be taught about globalization for me coming from an african country i was really interested in globalization by the way my name is abiodu but my classmate at the diploma is to cut my name to abby because of globalization so abby is my globalized name accepted by all, easy to call by all. So, you know, the diploma program exposed you to globalization, to leadership, to different scopes of leadership, different types of leadership. And you'll be also be taught about the different transformational leaders across the world, like a case study of them. They will take you through all those process. You know, but most importantly, keeping you as a leader, as a global leader. So for you as a global leader, what do you think you are supposed to know. The diploma program is going to expose you to what you are supposed to know as a global leader. Expose you to every narrative that is happening across the world. I'm sure in your own you know, program, they'll be exposing you to what is happening in Ukraine and Russia, I think. Maybe when you go to globalization and decolonization and whole sort of things. So you're able to understand from your country where, you know, how globalization is and how leadership is. And we're able to train you on the skills that you need to learn as a leader and how to relate to other things. But most importantly, helping you to be a transformational leader and an inclusive leader. When I got to Cody, I was able to learn how to be tolerant, accept other vulnerable group and understand, about, understand more things about intersectionality, understand why other people need to be given some privilege more than the normal people. Understand why other set of people who are vulnerable needs to be given chances, need to be given a neighbor environment so that they can be able to achieve what they need to achieve. And that's what intersectionality is all about. And you know, it makes you an inclusive leader. It makes you not to be a judgmental leader. It makes you to understand who the different vulnerable groups are and how to bring them to the table. And you know, the mode of facilitation is very unique. It's an adult learning. There's no right or wrong answer. And they, you know, they make the space peaceful for everybody to learn. So it's not, nobody is trying to get over the space more than the other person. The space is being protected and managed for everybody to learn. And you know, the most important thing is the fact that it's an adult learning system. It gives us the space to learn from one another. And the beauty of this program is the fact that you, you'll be learning from different groups, from different continents, from different culture. You know, at a point in time when people start explaining about some of their culture, I almost got a culture shock. But you know, Cody trained us to be tolerant, to able to accept other people's uh, narrative and see how we'll find an equilibrium in that. So it gives you a space and a good environment to learn and also unlearn a whole lot of things that you might have learned as a leader. But by the end of the leadership program, you become a better leader. And also some of the things that come to the leadership program, you'll be able to collaborate with the St. Francis University in other programs and in other networks. When the school is having any for you'll be able to participate in the school program and also collaborate with the community. 
like I said, Kodi International Institute is a very unique institute that's learned a whole lot of inclusive, inclusivity and also including other marginalized groups in everything we do. Uh, you will learn about the indigenous people in Canada and how what Kodi has been doing to bring them to the table for their needs to be captured and also for their interests also to be protected because it's all about humanity. So Cody will teach you how to become human being and you know, be humble in yourself and be a best, the best leader that you can ever be. I'm more interested about feminist leadership and you'll be exposed to that as well because I'm a feminist and I was hoping to learn about the new forms of leadership and feminist leadership, one of the leadership training that I was exposed to. And in other elective courses, you'll be able to choose other elective courses that really applies to your own knowledge. But by the end of the training program, you'll be able to know what next you want to do in your life, how you're going to channel your capacity, your passion to really bring about development in your community. We are very keen in bringing about community development, no matter which community you call your community, but Cody makes you to be a better member of the community, to bring out the best in your community and also shaping you to give the best to your community. So for me, that's what, you know, the diploma program is all about. It's a very interesting program. It's very loaded, fully packed, but you know, you have a good learning environment to learn a whole lot of things. And not just about what they teach you, but what your other colleagues are also bringing to the table from the different part of the world makes the learning unique. And the adult learning facility is also very unique. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Abby Adun, for sharing about um, and for you know, in particular, highlighting uh, around that space for leadership and leadership development and that that cross um, peer and cross cultural learning. Um, so now I'm pleased to uh, invite another grad uh, to speak, uh, Anne-Marie Smith. Um, Anne-Marie is a leadership and project consultant and the co-founder of Ahadi Leadership Edge Global, a consortium of Black women leaders and business owners from Africa and the Caribbean, and the founder and managing director of Parent Possible, a community-centered parent mentoring and coaching organization based in Jamaica. She's a fellow of the Cody Institute and a published researcher. She's passionate about supporting leaders and building their capability to enable radical, innovative, and transformative change. Anne-Marie is currently pursuing doctoral studies with her main research focus being that of developing a parenting education model for the Caribbean using a leadership development approach. She's also the proud mother of two young adult, of two young adult children. Welcome, Anne-Marie. Thank you, Martha, and good day, everyone. It's really great to be here. and. Um... I'm feeling a little bit warm and fuzzy being able to connect with my, reconnect with my Cody family. I think I want to start out by talking a little bit about who I was before I came to Cody to give you an appreciation of how my, my participation in the diploma program has helped me. So before I came to Cody, I was a senior senior member of the public sector here in Jamaica. And my role was around developing leaders. Um, and it had to do with developing the leadership capability of the top tier of the public sector. So the permanent secretaries, senior directors, ministers of government and so on and so forth. And in fact, my role was not just doing that for Jamaicans, but my role had expanded to start to do that for others across the Caribbean region as well. And I was also in, involved in setting up learning and development institutions, including with leadership development, um, with a leadership development focus in other parts of the region. So when I I came, when I when I I got to a place where I felt that I needed to start doing something that not only helped me to be in touch with the policymakers who were then in touch with the citizens, but I wanted to be closer to the citizenship. I wanted to be closer to the community. I want to change. And so just by the way, I heard about the CODI Diploma in Developmental Leadership. And I did apply and I did wonder what difference would a program in development leadership make to me 
given my own experience as a leadership development facilitator and as a leader. And so I came to Cody. And there are a number of different things that were very striking for me and made a significant difference. And a part of that had to do with the actual program, meaning what you encountered in the classroom, so to speak. But what made a big difference to me as well, and perhaps even more of a difference to me was what we encountered outside of the classroom. So the program itself um, had to do, and I know that this was the, the, the deliberate, the hidden curriculum, so to speak, was a deliberate part of the construct. So the whole things around leadership and globalization and um, what was promoting accountable democracy and looking at gender and intersection, intersectionality, all those things were important and critical. And I learned, I learned um, new things. I was refreshed in new ways. I, I had been exposed to many things before, a theory of change, all of the different things that I was meeting are things that I had been exposed to before and may even have facilitated and, and developed courses and programs around for others. But I still learned and learned in significant ways that every day I kept being surprised about how much I was changing and how much I was learning um, in this program. What was also important for me, given the kind of work I did, was not just what I was, the new knowledge and experience I was gaining, but also the new tools I was picking up that I could go back to continue to use as a facilitator of learning um, for others. Significant for me was what I know is often called the hidden curriculum. It was the things that happened outside of the classroom. And I'm not talking about just the field trips and the engagement with the community. It was the fact that we were pulled from willingly, of course, from different parts of the world and were placed together in community. We lived together on the hall. We, we didn't know anybody else except each other for the most part in the community. And so we were forced almost to develop, to build community among ourselves. And so what I ended up with were not just classmates and, and diploma program mates, I ended up with brothers, with sisters, with daughters. There were some who even tried to mother me, even though I was one of the older members of the, of the cohort. I gained friends and I gained friends and, and family members who I'm, I'm still really very closely connected to, even now, even, if we, even though we may not speak to each other all the time. So one of the things that we did when we, we exited the program was that we, we, we developed um, a, a WhatsApp group and that WhatsApp group is still very much alive and well. And one of the things that happened is that as we travel across the world to different places, um, I find that members of the, of the group are always there to host and welcome and, and bring warmth to, to each other. So just was it in September, August, I think, one member of the group was here in Jamaica and I was just so happy to see her, you know, and to go and to, to welcome and to engage with her and talk about um, not just making her feel comfortable here in Jamaica, but talk about what are some of the things that we can continue to do, not just with me and her, but with others as we continue to extend our practice. Um, I found that I came to Cody very well trained. Um, I had studied, I had, was a trained, I'm a trained teacher. I'd done a first degree outside of going to teacher's college. I'd done a master's program. And I had done many, many professional development programs and courses, but it didn't matter. It, it doesn't matter if you come with none of those kinds of certifications. It doesn't mean, matter if you come with a PhD or master's certification, you still are able to learn and feel as if you are spending good time invested in yourself and preparing yourself to go back into your community, whatever your community looks like to make a difference. So it doesn't matter what you come with. All of us, because of the kinds of ways in which the learning is organized and, and facilitated, all of us felt as if there was a space for us and all of us felt that we were, were learning. I, I, one of the things I love and continue to love about Cody, and which for you is gonna be even more, um, more distinct, is the fact that the Institute follows you and accompanies you even after you leave, even after you graduate. Um, and how did that happen? 
It's in a less structured way than it's going to happen now under this new diploma program. But the facilitators are not just facilitators, or we can say teachers, they're also practitioners. And because they're practitioners, they are also in the field. And they're in the field where their participants are drawn from. So quite often you'll see, because I, I, I am now on social media with a couple of, of, of the persons who are members of the CODI team, you'll see that somebody is traveling to this part of the world or that part of the world, and you see that they're meeting up with the participants or that they're going to the participants' organizations because there's something that they're working on together. You'll, you'll see where they're going out and they're going, there's going to be some delivery of learning in a, in a different part of the world. And it's CODI graduates who are there, maybe they're co-facilitators and so on and so forth as well. As a matter of fact, I have had the opportunity. In, I graduated in 2017, and in 2018, I was invited back to be a co-facilitator with Julian in the Promoting Accountable Democracy course. And that, for me, also was a significant part of building, continuing to build my own capability. So the opportunities that were presented and are presented even after you leave, I have had the opportunity again to work in that area. It's no longer Promoting Accountable Democracy. It's participation, I don't remember the middle one, and governance. And I, I missed my train of thought just now. Oh yes, I have had, had the opportunity to work with Julian to, and work with other graduates of CODI who were not a part of my group to do publications as well. And that for me has been interesting. I had the opportunity to be the valedictorian for that graduation in the fall of 2017. And this morning, as I was thinking about what I would share with you, I went and I pulled a paragraph from what I shared with the gathering then. And it says that the experience was one in which the facilitator or the facilitator was not so much a sage on the stage, but guides on the side, where we were led to discover that much of the knowledge you require resided within us and was embedded in our lived experiences, where we were invited through skillful questioning to examine our deeply held assumptions and biases, to be reflective, to be open and to share. It allowed us, it allowed me to see myself in new ways that were not always comfortable and to see others through expanded frames of references. As community leaders and as leaders full stop, we were being ushered into adopting similar approaches with the communities with which we engage. There's a lot more I can say. I know my time is limited. Um, I want to, as a graduate of the program, I want to welcome you to the place where you're thinking about becoming a, a participant in the program and welcome you to the community. It, you, it will not be wasted. It will not be wasted because you learn not just about yourself, you learn about others. One of the things that happened, I considered myself to be very tolerant. It's part of what I used to have conversations around with others all the time and facilitate and coach them around. My level of tolerance expanded significantly when I came to Cody. And it wasn't just because I was um, plunging into this space with persons from all across the world. And I see all of you putting in the chat where you're from. Um, and I, many of the colleagues then were from some of these places as well. It was because of the things that I learned. It's, a, it's about open, opening my mind to be more inclusive and understanding what that meant. It was getting to a place where I understood that I had some really deeply held, held biases that it wasn't that anything was wrong with me. It was because of my, what I had been accustomed to. It's because of the world that I had lived in. It's a world that didn't have any kind of engagement with certain kinds of, um, cultures before and now I began to appreciate those cultures. Um, again, a lot more I could say, but I, I believe we have a bit of a question and answer piece that, that follows. I, I encourage you to apply. Um, I encourage you to benefit from it. Um, I'm very happy that there's a residential component that continues to be a part of the program, but I'm particularly happy that there is what I'm calling the accompaniment, that when you go back into your context, and you take your action plan with you and you start to implement that action plan, that there's a more deliberate accompanying that you will, you will experience than we did in our time. And um, I, I believe that from that, we're gonna get some incredible results because right now 
we are getting incredible results from the people that I did my program with who didn't have the kind of accompaniment that you're having. And I want to say, um, I remember when, I think it was day two or three of the program, when Abby came into that room, she came in like a whirlwind. And she was one of the persons I said to myself, I wonder how I'm gonna survive the program with this young woman. Because she was, I'm very quiet <laughs> and very reflective. And the program helped it further develop that. Abby was very, very passionate and always the first to put up her hand to say something. Abby was very, she's very passionate about a lot of things. And she thought that she was at a place where she had to be fighting about all of these things that she believed in. Um, as a feminist and so on and so forth. And I saw Abby transformed. Like I saw so many other people transformed. And today, one of the persons that I'm most proud of that came out of that program is Abby. I don't get to say it to her. At least I haven't been saying it to her, but I follow Abby and I'm extremely proud of who Abby continues to become in part because of that program and in part because of the other kinds of experiences that she has had. Um, if you can get the kind of experience that I got and the kind of experience that Abby has had and begin to have the kind of impact that she's having across the world, then you would not have wasted even a moment of the time that you would invest in this program. And so I invite you to continue to consider the program and to consider other offerings that Cody has. I think I'm going to stop here. Thank you so much, Anne Marie, and and thank you so much again, Abby. You know, it's it's we're really grateful that we've been able to continue to walk along this journey with you uh, that you both have had since taking the diploma, and it's it's just humbling to hear um, everything that you've been working on and accomplishing and, and building in community. Um, so thank you for that and for taking the time to share your experiences today. Uh, Brian, do we want to open it up for questions or do you have a list sure. of questions that you've been gathering from the chat? Thanks, Martha. I collected some from the chat and some of them have been answered in the chat. So we're trying to hit the ones that maybe were not answered. Um, and I'll throw it out there for any of those who are on the panel here that can answer and, uh, and go from there. There was a question around the English language and how do I know whether our country is considered among the countries where English is a language of instruction and therefore don't need to take an English proficiency test? Um, I can answer that one quickly. Uh, we don't we don't uh, um, require an English proficiency test um, like IELTS or, or, or TOEFL or, or any of the, the, the standard tests uh, for attending in the diploma. It's more um, through the application that we take a look at ability to communicate in English and and possibly um, uh, an option for an interview if we have any questions for that, but but we really in some ways rely on people self identifying uh, their ability to be able to communicate uh, in English at a, at a level of proficiency that would allow them to participate in the course. Okay, um, there were several questions around the idea of like um, accreditation and um, in that regards and even the one just popped up now about professional development or academic development or is it both so I think you can answer that one and some of the others in, in a similar way. Um, can you talk about that Martha? Sure, uh, so this is a non credit diploma um, at the time so it, it doesn't bear um, any credit value, um, either at the undergraduate or the graduate level. Um, there. Um, the. And, and that's the short answer to that. Uh, so it is focused more on um, uh, practitioners and, and looking at uh, practitioners' experience uh, in leadership in community. Um, it is a very, I think, interesting mix and combination of theory and practical. Uh, so I wouldn't want to drop it in a particular professional development bucket or academic development bucket. Um, I think it crosses and moves, and I think it even goes beyond those boundaries into uh, being a bit more kind of grounded and practitioner focused. But um, at the moment, uh, it is not a, a credit bearing. Uh, so it, for example, wouldn't have transfer credit into a uh, into post-secondary, um, either at St. Avex or at other post-secondaries. Sure. Um, there was also some questions regarding the content of and the timing of the of the short courses in, in, in that regards. And uh, maybe Yogesh, if you're still there and available, yeah. maybe you can pop in there about how 
um, maybe the content of your short course uh, might look for those who are interested in that. Okay, thanks. Thanks, uh, Brian. And hello, everyone. So nice to uh, see so many of the familiar faces and, and names. And thank you for your interest in the, in the upcoming diploma program uh, and, and the potential uh, applicants and, and, and participants. So more broadly, I think uh, um, Anne-Marie touched upon a, a lot of the things. Uh, uh, and, and this is after I think uh, 2018 was the last diploma that we had uh, offered. Uh, and, and this will be the first time we will be offering the diploma as a hybrid. So we have not done it where there is an online component and then there is on-campus component and then the follow-up online. So it's the first time. So in many ways, this is an experiment uh, and a lot of the things are unknown to us as well. Uh, so, as part of the diploma curriculum, as Martha explained, uh, there are um, there will be three, maybe four. Um, uh, we are still deciding on that one. Uh, thematic courses will be offered, um, and uh, these courses, um, those who are attending diploma, they will be in these courses, so they they will have an option to choose one of the courses. Uh, but uh, we are also thinking of opening up these courses uh, to external um, audience. So that means that uh, during these thematic courses, you might be joined by, by others who are not in the diploma. And this has happened in the past as well. Uh, so that creates that, that uh, particular certificate course or that particular thematic course becomes, becomes a standalone piece within the diploma and uh, the entire course will be wrapped up within the two week period and it will have its own learning objectives and, and uh, content that will be covered. Obviously it will be linked to what you have gone through before. Uh, and then uh, there is a component to bring the learning together from this in different thematic areas at the, at the end. I also saw some of, some of the um, questions more broadly around the, um, around the learning. And so, you know, um, you can you can look at uh, this this program in terms of what you will get out of it uh, in three different ways. One is obviously you will get new knowledge uh, in the different uh, uh, topics that will be covered um, in the classroom on leadership, on adult education, on on different thematic areas of inclusive economies, resilient communities, and and accountable democracies. So on that you will get new knowledge. The second piece is you will hopefully uh, build some new skills uh, while you are in the program. And the third one that uh, I think um, Anne-Marie talked about is, uh, what, uh, what did you call it, Anne-Marie? Invisible learning or, or, or out of the class learning. It's the, you know, you will be part of this, this cohort of uh, 25 to 30 uh, participants from all across the world. And that will become your network. Uh, that will, you, you will become um, uh, uh, supporters of each other and, and you will learn from each other. So that the third aspect of, of, of learning with the group, learning with, uh, with others uh, at Cody. Uh, so that's, that's also part of the, um, the package that you will uh, get in terms of the outcome of, of, of this program. There was one question around uh, how do you uh, link with the, with the contemporary um, big uh, big issues. So as part of the different thematic courses, but also as part of the foundation, we will, we will look at what are the um, um, current uh, big, uh, big issues affecting um, uh, development. So be it climate change, be it urbanization, be it uh, changing demographics, uh, uh, technology. So that we will, um, um, uh, definitely take up in, in, in one of the thematic courses. For example, I teach uh, livelihoods and markets and, and globalize, we start with globalization. We start with uh, the, the current trends um, uh, in development, uh, but some of that uh, may be covered in the, in the foundations as well. So definitely the course is very, very contemporary, looking into, uh, taking into account what's happening, both locally uh, in, in, the, uh, in the communities of the, uh, uh, where the participants come from, but at the global level as well. Thanks, thanks, you guys. There's a, a few questions there regarding visas and what the what the Cody can do uh, to assist or not assist. And um, can we have clarification for the visa process? I know we get a um, acceptance letter and that begins the process, but 
Uh, Martha, do you have any more insight there? Um, well, we provide an acceptance letter that, that meets the requirements for a visa application uh, in the content of the acceptance letter. And then it would be up to the participant to apply for their visa in, um, in, a, in a timely manner. I, as soon as they receive the acceptance letter is, would be the recommendation. And uh, the, the other assistance we apply there is if we do receive inquiries from, uh, from the visa office where they've applied, we, we respond to those inquiries and offer clarifications as best we can, but, but the main part we're involved in is providing the acceptance letter. Thank you. Um, there was a few questions around how this program differs between the Global Change Leadership Program and uh, you know whether the, somebody who could attend a GCL can attend the diploma program. Um, yeah, so the second part first, uh, if, if you've attended a, a previous CODI program, whether it's GCL or an on-campus certificate or an online certificate, you, you're uh, more than welcome to apply for the diploma. Um, how the diploma differs from GCL, um, there, there are several ways. One big one is um, GCL is a, a explicitly a, um, a uh, women uh, and, and those who identify as women's space. Uh, so it's a, it's a women's only course uh, or how it has been. And it, it, so it has an explicit focus on women's leadership and, and feminist practice. Um, in it. Um, the GCL also um, is, isn't divided into the three modules as the diploma is. There's a residential phase and then there's a mentorship phase that follows. Uh, and the residential phase is slightly shorter. It's about seven weeks. Uh, so there's lots of curriculum and content differences and focus. Um, it's it's, it's a, a more specific kind of bounded focus rather than kind of some of the broad pieces uh, that the diploma pulls into leadership. And um, the other uh, big difference uh, is that the GCL is a, a different program. It's a um, fully funded program. It has a different application process. Um, so uh, participants in GCL, for example, um, would go through a slightly different application process and um, receive their travel and accommodation and all other expenses covered. Whereas in the diploma, uh, participants are responsible for their own travel. Okay, thank you. Um... And there's a, there's a, it goes around the theme here of the online learning. And like there was a question regarding uh, whether the 10 week in person would be also be offered online. So those would not be able to travel or didn't have the visa. Uh, and also whether uh, we would continue to offer online courses in the future. Sure. Um, yeah, uh, again, I'll take the last one first. Uh, yes, we'll continue to offer online courses in the future. Those. I think are here to stay. We've we've had quite a bit of success for them. We we see what they do in terms of opening up accessibility um, uh, for people who aren't able to come in person, um, and uh, and in terms of bringing lots of different views into the classroom. So our our selection of online courses might shift over the years as as some some are offered and others move into maybe being offered every other year. But um, but they we will continue to be offering a, a wide slate of online courses every year. Um, in terms of module two. That, that's come up and we've had discussion. Um, I think like everyone else, we've had mixed success with hybrid uh, delivery when you have some people in the class and, and, and some people online. And as I think both um, Abby and Anne-Marie shared, there is really something that happens outside of the classroom in terms of, in terms of cohort building and, and that, um, that peer learning and, and, and that, um, that sharing that happens in that space. So module two is, is going to be fully in person. It, it won't be a hybrid offering, um, but I think there is opportunity potentially for those who are accepted into the diploma, but don't get their visa in time. Um, if they do get their visa, perhaps not in time to start module two, but they get their visa in time uh, to join in in late July to come for the two week certificates that are embedded within the diploma, the short courses as Yogesh uh, spoke about that could potentially be uh, an option or an opportunity for people who are accepted into the diploma, but perhaps their visa doesn't come through in time uh, for them to be here to join the full, the full scope of module two. Okay, and there was a question there regarding um, the, um, the, when you had the virtual online training, how, how do we handle the variation of hours across the world, right? And how's, yeah. that, how's that work out? 
So that's always a tricky one with online training, uh, trying to find the time that that works best for most. Um, I think for now, I'll just we haven't decided on a time for what that um, what the that synchronous piece will look like. We haven't set a day or a time for that. And I think part of that is because of that complexity of of sorting out time zones when you're working uh, with people globally and participants globally. So the timing of it will likely depend a lot on the cohort, the makeup of the cohort, um, who, who the diploma participants are going to be um, in that first module. And then once we see that, we'll start looking at, uh, at best options uh, for setting that time. Okay. Um, yes, and it's once a week, not every day. I think someone had asked. Sure. And, yeah, thanks, also, yeah. and there was also a question like Cody um, partnerships and like how, do, how does this work with our partners and like is it preference given to partners for graduates or um, how do they connect with Cody partners so it's a little bit vague but if you have your whoever answered that question is still there raise your hand and I'll let you come on board and you can ask the question yourself. So I think it's safe to say that we, we work with our partners and you know yeah. we take recommendations from our partners. It's one of the questions that we ask is, is if you've either been in the Cody course before or if you're involved with one of our partners. So um, it's always a benefit, but it's not exclusive to our partners. Yeah, I think that's right, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. There was a question involving, um, you know, the fundraising and partnerships for resources and stuff. So, you know, obviously there is a cost to this course. You want to talk a little bit more about that and the payment system. Um, specifically about the the payment system. Yeah, I mean, I think that Charlene answered the thing that there's different time frames for uh, paying uh, as yeah. as impartially. You don't have to have all the money up front. Um, yeah. We'd love to offer our course for free for everybody, but at the time there is cost involved and uh, this is not a fully funded program. So if you want to talk about why, you know, it's structured in the way that it is, that'd be maybe beneficial for some. Sure. Um, yeah. And we're, we're still finalizing um, what a, um, we're still finalizing the timelines for what a um, kind of installment payment piece would look like. Um, it, the, the full fee won't have to be provided up front, but I did see a question in the chat out of the corner of my eye around um, fees per modules. Um, how, in terms, of, um, in terms of kind of your planning around that, how it will likely look, and, and this will come out with acceptance letters, um, is, um, is that the bulk of the fee will, will need to be uh, paid uh, before the start of module two. Um, the res the residential phase because um, as you can imagine that's that's also where the bulk of the cost of, of providing the program is is in terms of the um, the room and board and the facilities for the 10 weeks residential phase so we won't require the full fee paid uh, before engaging in module one online but we will be looking for um, for the uh, majority of the fee to be covered uh, before people arrive for the start of module two okay um, and here's a question about the at the wrap of the program. They want to know whether there's going to be a time for everybody to come together at the end of the uh, thing to in order to celebrate their mm -hmm. achievements of completing the diploma. Um. Yeah, um, yeah, and you know that's one of the I think the biggest impacts of this change in this in this new model is is that people will be completing um, the diploma when they're when they're back in community um, and 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 in their home communities. So that that celebration at the end of module three uh, will will likely need to be in a virtual space, uh, but that doesn't mean that we won't be at the end of module two where we've we've just spent ten weeks together and have gone through um, an intensive shared learning experience through the foundations course and the electives and the um, the integration phase. We that's where um, we'll be uh, holding an in person uh, celebration. Of the learning yeah and i think maybe abby or Anne marie can uh jump on here like we when you arrive on campus we had, give opportunities for uh participants to meet and spend time with community members from the anaganish community so maybe abby and Anne marie can offer some insight there about the value of uh, community learning here in anaganish and at cinevex okay yeah thank you so it's yeah, opportunities to really learn with the communities, the, the library, 
is there the community library where you can also learn English language and other language within the community. And also there's this, depending on your area of focus, uh, you can also relate with the, uh, the council there. So we had the Antigonish and I was also, we had time to visit the, the government, the council, and also relate with the mayor of Antigonish where we even paid a visit to her in the house. So there were op opportunities to learn within the community of the Antigonish community. It's a small community, but you know, we all love to engage one another and there's a space for the community members to also come and know you. So I think that's, that's a program they do where, you know, community members come to know some of us to also meet with the new uh, intakes and also relate with them. And you could also find somebody from your country living in Antigonish. If I may add, I mean, um, so the Cody neighbor that we were sort of adopted, mm -hmm. um, each of us, and some of those relationships worked out much better than others. I, I see where people are still connected with their co coded neighbors and are still visiting and meeting extended family and so on. And so the, for me, that was what was very important. And what that is, is that each of us was assigned to a family in the community. Um, and families might come to pick you up to take you to dinner. You may go on a trip with them. Just being there, right? Um, there was one particular family who became the Cody neighbor for all of us. You know, they were so heavily involved in everything that, that was going on. Um, I was with a young family um, and still I'm connected. I don't speak with them every day, but there's still a connection that, that, that is there. And I found that that was very important. You felt that there was a group of people whom if you needed to, you could call on and who could take you outside of the university campus and there are things that you could do with them. Thank you. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Um, so this is the most recent question that's popped up. Do you have details on the modular programs available for registration if interested? I understand apart from the diploma, there are also module courses available. So we, I think we went through that. There's three modular courses that will be available for your four. Um, and, uh, you know, so if Martha has anything to add there, maybe Martha, you can talk a little bit about the, you know, the dynamic and what we're looking for across diversity across the, the globe and the number of students that we're able to take this year and, you know, the application process and the, the, pro, and the, um, uh, the value of getting that application in sooner than later so we can make the, the selection process. Yeah, sure. And, um, and yeah, just for that last question on, um, on the, the modular courses, uh, the three that we'd mentioned, potentially four, is, is yes, the details for those will be coming out. We'll, we're hoping to open applications for those for people who are interested in just applying for those two-week courses um, it, later in December. So we'll be um, uh, letting everyone in our networks know once those applications are open. And Brian, I just want to jump, I see a question there too around um, provision for persons with disabilities. Um, so, so just to address that question, we do do our best to, to accommodate and, and have a, a safe space uh, for people with all abilities um, in the classroom and in the program. Um, we do send out, if you are accepted as part of the package, we do send out a form where we ask uh, around accommodation needs um, uh, that someone might have uh, when coming to the um, when coming uh, for an on-campus program. And then we work with the participant, um, our student services team, and, and we work with the participant to ensure that, that we're able to have that covered. So, so yes, we do have a process in place for that, for, for the, the um, participant who asked that question. Um, so for process, because I see we're kind of getting, we're near the end of our time here. Um, applications are due November 18th. Um, and uh, those are applications in with both references in. Um, we are hoping to uh, complete selection uh, very soon after that. Uh, we know time is of the essence when it comes to applying uh, for visas uh, in order to be able to have visas to travel to be here for May. Uh, so, so our goal is to have those, uh, those letters of acceptance out um, as soon as possible. Um, if not before the end of 2022, very, very early in 2023, um, at the start of January, um, to give people as much time as possible for visas. And uh, so the um, sooner you're able to have your application in and, and have prompt your references to have your references in, uh, the better for that process in terms of speeding that along. 
we are looking as this is the, um, you know, the first year bringing the diploma back after a bit of a hiatus and it's a new model. We are looking at a smaller cohort uh, than, than usual, um, uh, probably capping out at about 30 people. Um, so it is a, a relatively um, competitive uh, process uh, in terms of only having 30 spots. Um, but, uh, and we do, you know, as Brian mentioned, we do think really carefully um, about, about cohort building and about mix. I saw a lot of questions around multiple people from, do we accept multiple people from the same organization and, and different areas? And that's, it, it's, it's, it's not that we don't, um, but we also think very carefully about mix and having as broad um, a cohort as possible to bring many perspectives together, uh, people working in various sectors, uh, uh, various regions um, together, uh, but then also thinking around what it means to have um, a, a cohort um, in your in your own area of work or in your own uh, region to be able to draw on after the diploma. So there's a lot of thought that goes into thinking through uh, selection and cohort, um, and it um, it so it it does become like I said um, with 30 spots. Um, it really is about um, having your application in as complete as possible. And once you do receive the acceptance letter, um, starting that process of, um, of confirming your acceptance of your spot as soon as possible.